I'm curious, what do you find? Because some people go into franchising thinking, okay, it's the franchisor's job to help me and do things for me. And they kind of have this, this expectation of waiting on the franchisor as opposed to being proactive. Now, I know your personality style, which is, you know, you're you're always being proactive. So what what do you see as the role of the franchisor in the gaps in terms of what they just what their role just isn't and and how do you fill that gap? I'll I'll tell my experience. So Little Caesars is good with operations. I mean, their training is eight weeks, seven weeks on site, one week, you know, if you wanna if you want to get into the franchise. So the operations is solid. Where they're now working on is leadership and how do you how do you run teams and things like that. And I tell anyone when you're working with a franchisor, I mean, ask as many questions as you can. I mean, listen, they they developed the process, right? They became successful. So you should be leaning on them as much as you can. But then as it relates to like the operations, you, you gotta operate it, right? You gotta or you got to find somebody to operate that business for you. Um, and um, what I what I do like about it, when I ask questions for the franchisor, they'll 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 get back to you quickly. Their marketing is stellar. Um, they have a great marketing um, staff. Uh, the gaps for me was, yo, know, this is pizza, right? And the the food cost is changing. <laughs> Even the people that been in the business for a long time. I was like, Kareem, man, we've never seen it like this. So it kind of made me a little bit feel better when I was seeing my costs all over the place um, because they were they were struggling with trying to figure things out, right? So I would call my, uh, this person that owns 70, now 80 units. And I'm like, hey, what are, what are you doing? And they will call me like, what are you doing with your prices? What are you doing with your costs? And so that that's how we got the second store is because the large, large owner was trying to get out of a territory. And so that's one of the things I do like about franchising. You get in and you could scale quickly. Like right now we can own five. Now I'm going back and forth. Do I want to grow in the brand or not? Versus like if you own an independent business, the scale in the same industry and find units is, is a little bit harder to do, you know? Um, so right now I'm already approved as a franchisee to take over a store is much easier. I don't have to do the training anymore. I don't have to, you know, um, show all this information. And so if I want to go and take over five, I can right now, but that's, that's not, I can't, I can't take over five turnarounds. You know, I learned that the, the hard way, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. I need, I need to have a mix of premium and some turnarounds. So unless that's, unless you have a good model. And so that's one of the things I learned is that resales are great, but make sure you have a good plan um, to say, I've, I always have ABC plans. So I have A, we, we've hit the numbers, we did our profit. B, we're break even, or C, we're not doing well. And then what do we do? So I always have three plans going into um, a transaction. Yeah, that's that's really smart. Well, and it's interesting. There's, I mean, there's two ways to buy resale. You can buy a turnaround or you can buy a business that's highly profitable. And, you know, right. doing well. And it's interesting. I got an email yesterday from someone in our system and uh, our uh, our team found him a resale that's priced at uh, right around 800K. It's priced at 790K. And so he sent me an email like, wow, this got a, a hefty price tag. And he, he was wanting to get kind of my insight on it. And that's nothing. We, yeah, if you're making the right, if you're making the right, if you're making the right profit, or if it's in, it depending what the industry, and that's one of the things I, I've learned. The price might be not a lot of money, but what is it going to take you to make the profit you want and the sales you want? So, and this is all relative, and that's why it's so important to have coaches. So important to be working with us where we can help you out through that process. I mean, you know, one of the things I heard someone say. Um, I rather them to spend the time researching the franchise instead of just getting into it. And then now they, they spend a hundred, 200, 400 grand and now it's the wrong opportunity. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. W make a small investment to get the help. Well, so the, and, and the reframe around 
that purchase price was, that's a good thing. It, it's a good thing that it's priced that high because that typically means that the business is made, is highly profitable. And if if you consider that most resales are somewhere between a two to four times multiple, um, even if even if it was a um, even if it was a four times multiple and priced on the higher side, that would mean that business was profiting 200K. Now I haven't seen the financials, so I don't know. I'm just making an assumption. So that was like my response, yeah. which is that's a good thing. If it's priced low, that means it's not <laughs> doing well and not making money. And so, that's right. and the, you know, the, the more profit margin, the more you can then afford to hire quality talent and, and bring in, uh, pay for good talent. That was one of the things I, I hadn't thought about in the food mm. space specifically and in terms of what the average unit volume was, you know, at that time. But, you know, it's hard in a in a in a specifically in a retail business or a food business that's doing that's not doing more than, you know, seven or eight hundred K in sales. It's hard to find a quality manager because typically it, it you're only able to afford maybe a 40k salary, maybe 35k salary and the, the the quality of talent at that level just isn't the same. You know, if you can pay right. a store manager 60, 70 grand, you're going to get a different caliber of talent. So really, you know, a, a nugget for for anyone who's in the buying process is you have to look at opportunities that have higher average unit volumes. If you enjoyed this short clip from the podcast, you can check out another short clip right here. Or if you wanna watch the full episode of this podcast, you can watch that here. And remember, knowledge is not power. It's applied knowledge that's power. Take care, have a great rest of your day.